Hi, welcome back to I Don't Like Murder. This is Jenny. Today I'm going to be telling you about the Dexter Killer, and I've got Rita here with me. Hey. Hey. All right, Rita. So I'm going to tell you today about Mark Twitchell, the Dexter Killer. I'm super excited about this one because I've been a huge fan of Dexter forever, and they're doing a reboot of Dexter this year. So I thought this was a perfect case to go over. Um, so, uh, just to start out, um, this guy, Mark Twitchell was a film director and writer. Um, and he was a huge fan of Dexter Mm -hmm. and that's where he got his quote unquote inspiration to become a serial killer. Um, and one of the weird things like tying it into Dexter, the series that I didn't no, but in my research I found they actually um, interviewed Michael C. Hall, the guy that played Dexter, about this case and asked him if he thought that the show was um, supporting the lifestyle of being a serial killer. Hmm. And he said no, and that he wasn't going to stop doing the show because if this guy is that much of a nut job, he didn't call him a nut job, right, but right. if this guy is that much of a nut job that he's going to do this, he would have found inspiration somewhere. Like you can't blame the show because the right. guy decides he wants to be a serial killer. Right. Um, so, so Mark Twitchell um, rented a garage and he set it up as his film studio so he could he could film his his film in this garage and so while he was doing that he did film it um it did not get picked up um i also did not look into anything that he had written but he did write a screenplay about the murder he committed um, Mm -hmm. and it went into a lot of detail and he wrote some other things also and um from what i've heard in my research that it was not the greatest uh, writing. <laughs> so, so I didn't bother trying to look it up because I didn't want to torture myself. Um, so what he did when he had this garage, he originally decided that he wanted to get on dating sites and he wanted to m- go after married men that were cheating on their spouses. Um, that was originally that was going to be his target, which is really strange because he was cheating on his wife with an ex. So I don't know quite why he decided that that was his bad guy that he was going after, but he decided to change it to single men because he thought that they would be easier to lure in. And if they're single, nobody would be looking for them as quick. So he would have extra days to dispose of the bodies and, Mm. you know, clean up the crime scene and before anybody was even really looking for him. So his first attempt at this was a guy named Gilles and he invited him and the, the girl that he was talking to on the dating site told him, gave him directions, didn't give an address to her place. Mm -hmm. So this guy, which this is a terrible idea for obvious reasons now, but she just said here are directions. So you go down this alley and you go through this garage. I'll leave the door part of the way open and just duck through the garage and then come through the yard and then gave directions to where to meet her, which, okay. As a woman, I would never never meet a guy that's like oh yeah well just well I'm probably not going to go to his house immediately anyway but I would never think that you gave me these weird directions Mm. and go into this garage and go through the garage and well it's not even my garage it's someone else's garage and they're (laughs) renting it out for a film production and then yeah really strange so this Jill guy goes in there And he gets attacked by Mark, who was wearing a ski mask. And he ends up being way stronger than Mark had anticipated. So he ends up like fighting him off and and leaving. And because of embarrassment or whatever, he decides not to report it to the police. So nobody knows. So then 
a while later, he decides I'm going to try this again. So he sets up this profile with this girl named Jen. And that's where he meets um, John Altinger through this site. And he ends up coming to the garage and meets Mark. And he's, you know, he's like, what, you know, what's going on? And he's like, oh, well, Jen's not home yet. I just talked to her. She got caught in traffic. She'll be home in a little bit. So he's like, okay, well, I'll just come back. So, so John leaves and then comes back because he doesn't, for some reason, I guess he was a really nice guy and I guess he just didn't realize. So he comes back and the guy's in there again. And it was another situation of, oh, well, she's caught up in traffic still. I, you know, so she, she said, just don't worry about it tonight. I guess Mark had gotten scared away. He was worried that that John had called somebody when he left for a while and told them about this weird guy in the garage. Mm. But so he ends up, so John goes home and then gets online and sends Jen an email like, hey, I'm really disappointed that this didn't work out. Hopefully we can, you know, meet up at some point soon. So then Mark emails him back immediately and like, oh, hey, I'm really sorry, whatever. I'm home now if you want to come back. So he does. (sighs) Yeah. So he goes back and then he ends up getting murdered. He dismembers his body. So to try to cover it up, he... um, First off, he dismembered his body. He had all these weird tools. He had like a game processing kit that he was using. And I, in some of his writing, he goes into really graphic detail about breaking bodies down and th- like really graphic. And he really enjoyed it way too much. Um, so he does that. He tries to burn his body in a garbage can not knowing that bodies don't burn in a regular fire. It has to be an extremely hot fire for a body to actually burn. So then he ends up disposing of the body. Like he ends up telling the police where he's disposed of the body. Um, He draws him a map after he gets arrested. But um, yeah, really weird. So the cops or the friends of John come to him or like they got emails from him saying that I met this amazing woman. Um, we're, we're taking a trip to Costa Rica. I'll be back before the holidays. Cause this was in, I think October or something. Mm-hmm. So, so he's like, Oh, we're going to be on in Costa Rica for a couple of months. So his friends are like, that's not, that's really weird. He's not like that. He's not impulsive like that. He wouldn't really, he wouldn't do that. And just to send an email saying I'm going to be gone for a couple months, mm-hmm. really weird. So they go mm-hmm. to his house to check out, to see what's up. Cause they're like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. So he had just gotten into riding, um, motorcycles or motorbikes and they were sitting outside and he hadn't covered them up or anything. And they're like, he would never leave those uncovered. Those are his babies. He wouldn't do that. So they're like, we know something's wrong. So they went to the police and the police are like, whatever, it's a grown man. He met a woman. We can't, what are we going to do? He probably ran off with this woman. We're not going to do anything about it. So they went back to his house and basically broke into his house and started going through his stuff, found his passport there. Everything was Mm. in his house. Like he hadn't, he obviously hadn't packed anything. Um, His keys and his wallet were gone but that was it everything else was there um and they said they knew when they saw the passport he obviously wasn't in costa rica Mm -hmm. so they go back to the cops and finally they're like okay well we'll check this out so he had smartly given one of his friends the weird directions that jen had given him so they gave those to the cops so the cops go to this garage to check it out and um So they find out the Mark's the one that had rented it. And so he goes in there and he's like, oh yeah, you can check out the garage, whatever. He's like, just so you know, um, we were shooting a film in here. It was a murder film. So we 
you know, we've done this huge cleanup. We used ammonia to clean everything up because, you know, but here's what it is. And of course he had proof that he had shot this movie and on and on. And he's like, yeah, come in, do whatever you need to do. So, (laughs) so they come the first time. And then the second time they come to check out the garage because they're like, oh, he was so willing to let us in there the first time. Of course, you know, he's going to love us. So the second time they go, they walk up to the garage and the lock had been changed. And he said, oh, the, that's not my lock. I don't know what happened. So they're like, okay. So the cops break it open and go in there. But of course, with him saying that, well, it seems like somebody else has like broken in or whatever. Oh, so they're like, okay, well, we're going to check this out anyway. And then they... Um, find a neighbor who had saw I'm not sure if it was the same neighbor or not but one of the neighbors saw the Gile guy run or someone running out of the garage and so when they were poking around they said that and they also saw Mark changing the lock on there so the neighbors ratted him out and said yeah he actually does did change the lock there was somebody here that ran out of here and we didn't know you know if it was a joke or if you know like it seemed like something might be okay we're not really sure and so somehow they find out that mark bought this car it was a mazda 6 he bought this car and so they questioned him about it because it was the same type of car that john had driven so they're like, what's the story with the car when they're when they're interrogating him? Because they kind of figured he was a little suspicious. So his story was, oh, I ran into this guy. He told me that he found a sugar mama and that they're running away to Costa Rica and oh, she's gonna buy him a new car when they get back. So he said, Hey, and basically the guy pulled over on the side of the road and was like, Hey, do you want to buy this car? And he just said, well, how much money do you have? And he said, oh, I've got $40. So, okay, here's the keys. Here you go. Here's the car. Okay. Yeah, that didn't happen. So they're like, obviously, that is an extremely fishy story. So it was, it was John's car. Obviously, they checked it out. It was his car. So then they impounded Mark's car, and they found a bunch of blood, which belonged to John in the back of his car. Obviously, he was super guilty. Um, he also had files on his computer that were deleted that they had recovered. And one of them was SK Confessions and it's Serial Killer Confessions, um, which is where he had also wrote out all these other weird things. Um, so he, he was an aspiring serial killer. Um, one of the more twisted things about this was that his alleged therapy appointments were on Friday nights, which is when he lured the guys to the garage. And he said that he was scared to talk to therapists because he didn't want to say that he had no empathy or sympathy for anyone because he was scared it was going to flag him as yeah. a psychopath. Um, so he didn't, he, he wouldn't open up to any of his therapists, which is kind of a red flag, but, um, but he did like really fantasize about the serial killer life and about being a serial killer. And he just started to be a serial killer and didn't, didn't quite make it to his goal, which is, but really strange. Um, he did get convicted of first degree murder for of John um and then the last I saw the Gilles guy they he's in Canada so I don't know exactly how the court systems work there but they had it had tried to try him for attempted murder of him and there was a stay put on it but he did get life in prison 
um, with the possibility of parole in 25 years, which mm. is the strictest, that is, I know the strictest sentence you can get in Canada. Um, and there are several books about this case that are out there. Jill wrote one of them. Um, I believe they published the screenplay that he wrote, mm. um, which is weird. Mm-hmm. And the strangest thing that I found out that I did not ever know about was he is on a Canadian dating website for prisoners. I didn't even know that that kind of a thing existed, mm-hmm. but they do have a, a dating site for prisoners and he is on it and it's $35 a year. So that. That is just on an offshoot for the show. That is a topic that we should look into because yeah. in the old days, they would be pen pals, you know, prison mm-hmm. pen pals. Yeah. And then if, if we're escalated to dating sites, because there are many women who marry men who are going to be in jail for the rest of their lives. Yeah. That's just really interesting. Um, and there's a, I've seen a bunch of documentaries about that. Women who, you know, they help support them. They love yeah. them. And yet they go home and they're alone. But then part of what's built into their life is connecting with them. And then, but just, just, it's so fascinating to uh, commit yourself to someone who you'll never physically touch. Yeah. It's a really strange, right? really strange situation. No, but that that's just really interesting. Now, so he did plead not guilty and then went through a whole trial and was convicted? Um, he, yes, okay. yeah, he did, he did confess though. Mm-hmm. Like he did confess to the police, but he did go through a whole trial mm-hmm. and was found guilty. Yeah, so it's and, super interesting. And, and how old was he again? Was he in his thirties or? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. super interesting that just the, looking at the criminal psychology of someone like that. Yeah. Is that, and then just the, the next case that I'll be talking about is that whole thing of where does that come from? Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm not going to be talking about serial murder, but how does somebody, I'm always attracted and interested in these stories of no criminal history, doing good in life. Everybody loves you and you kill someone. Yeah. And even, you know, afterwards and, and, um, being found guilty, your family does not believe that you could have ever done anything even, and even with, um, lots and lots of evidence, it's just, what is it with the mind that can, um, yeah, that, that says I can turn this on and off, uh, he was, yeah, yeah, he was definitely a sociopath or a psychopath. Yeah. And admittedly so, but he did also glamorize that mm. and that it was his goal in life to be a serial killer. So he, he knew there was something wrong with him, mm-hmm. whether anyone else knew or not, there's really not a lot of, of research about that. Of, of if anybody else noticed those things in him or not, mm. but he was fully aware that he lacked empathy and that he was not, he didn't have the feelings of a normal human. He very much recognized that. Right. Especially when you, when we talk about cases of dismemberment, Mm -hmm. just that disconnect to be able to do it. And even there have been cases where it's not, the job isn't finished because people just couldn't do it anymore. You know, they just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the goal was to, you know, you know, break it up into millions of pieces. They got past a, a few joints and said, that's it. You know, yeah. after I hit, after I yeah. hit the elbow, I can't go any further. Can't, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just almost um, unrealistic or I guess surreal to even imagine doing that. Because, yeah. And then just, just, I, and I, I, I'm not liking it to cutting up uh, a chicken or something, but it just to say, okay, I'm, 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 I've got a whole chicken. I'm going to cut up, you know, to fry up. Yeah. And then the work it takes and the scissors and the, you know, the pulling off of yeah. the legs and you know, <laughs> to keep everything in place. Yeah. I can't even get to a point of, it doesn't even seem real to think a human being 
would do that to another, you know, but they have to have a chainsaw and they'd have to have, you know, big stuff yeah. and, th- and then go, this is a human I'm doing this to. It's yeah. just, uh, yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, and it but, seemed yeah. like he delighted in that. Like he was very right. because in his, in some of his writings, like he was very detailed about how like exhilarating it was to dismember him, right. which is just a whole new level of crazy. Right. Well, and remember Jeffrey Dahmer? He knew something yeah. was wrong with him. Yeah, he just couldn't stop, and mm-hmm. you know, just yeah. it, but but that, and then. The whole thing about cannibalism and you go yeah it didn't it there's some something in his brain that went i just wanted to try it and i did it and i'm fine yeah yeah where yeah so 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 that's what's so trippy is what um you know what part of the brain and or or what happens uh is it an environmental thing is it how our uh, how our mind is connecting and how we see things are sociopaths and psychopaths born that way? Uh, I don't know. Well, and I'm, I'm thinking because I know there's, um, they try to do like criminologists will say some of the most famous killers of our time, they've tried to go in with autopsies and say, is this brain any different than any other brain mm-hmm. there? And, and yeah. unfortunately they say no. So you, yeah. you know, and you know, they can say some of it's bad environment, but uh, it's, yeah, those are, that's, a, that, that's so frightening. But really, he seems really smart to be able to hold it together, to make, you know, to to come up with this elaborate plan to try yeah. to keep him going by, you know, because at first it works with the police to say, oh, it's just come a right studio, yeah. we're doing horror movies, bunch of pig's blood around here, no big deal. Yeah, exactly. You know, we had to clean it up. Exactly. It's like, oh, okay, until it all, but not smart enough to. Oh, yeah. 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 And then the first ideas, off, don't right. have the guy's car. Right. Well, that and then, but just not being smart to say, oh, single guys uh, won't have as many people looking for them because, yeah. you know, especially, I mean, of course, of all the crime stuff that we love to watch, not murder, you know, we don't love murder, but <laughs> um, is that there's everyone has a pattern. And at some point, mm-hmm. you know, you and I talk by text every single day. At yeah. some point, unless you go, I'm totally swamped. I can't talk to you for two days. If I didn't, you know, I'll check in or you check in to go, hey, what's up? Good morning. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'm going to be away or, or whichever. Just, just, hey, let me tell you the latest thing I've seen. That's a pattern. Yeah. That you have with somebody. So all of a sudden it would be, I haven't heard from Rita and um, she's not answering her phone. And uh, yeah. Is, yeah. is that yeah. someone is going to know unless you know so you really have to really if you're going to be a good serial killer you <laughs> have to really look for that person but then how are you going to find them because they're not going out you know they're not going to be looking yeah. for you but yeah you know good try glad it stopped on one yeah i'm sure the giles guy is very happy that oh yeah yeah but uh, yeah. yeah and it proves the importance of having friends that know you right like you were saying yeah yeah, that, that somebody yeah. would be missing you and even lonely people. But again, that's it's yeah, it I mean it, it does happen and we'll talk about cases that it just just by um there are some people who are just nameless and faceless. We don't know because they spend, you know, they they don't have a lot of connections. Because I know there are people who their families are gone and uh maybe the, the groups that they run in aren't that connected. Uh, that that they just nobody's claiming them when they pass yeah. on and so those the, you know they'll those cases that we hear about for years say they're nobody you know said that they were missing but they found somebody's body yeah that those kind of things yeah. so those, but the but when you're trying to <laughs> uh, catch a victim online I, I to me just from um a, an investigative point I would be Dude, you know everything's gonna be traced back to you. I mean, yeah, the car, exactly. The car was ridiculous, but yeah. That not only that, that so once they found out the gentleman was missing and it didn't sound right going to Costa Rica, then once he's been missing for a certain amount of time, they can just take that apart, that computer apart, and get directions mm-hmm. on exactly, you know, 
that where everything pinged and where it went. And so the, yeah. The, yeah, the days were going to be numbered as soon, like I said, as soon as somebody says, Hey, something's up in Dodge, but what an yeah. interesting case. Now, is he giving interviews? Have you seen, I mean, does he try to d- talk to people or, you know, utilize the media? Like, you um, know, like some of I our haven't... famous killers do. Yeah, I haven't seen that so much. Just the mm-hmm. dating website. Mm-hmm. I will look for the show for when we go into editing. I'll look and see if there's something that we can pull up to see because yeah. it'd be interesting to see what he looks like. And then uh, terrifying if he looks just like us, you know, regular person USA. He does. He does. Oh, I've okay. seen him. Yeah. Even he, more terrifying. Even more terrifying. Well, not like us, but men. Yes. Yeah. Us. But regular person. <laughs> yeah. Because he's yeah, got to be very able to regular. Up. And that's, yeah, that's what's so intriguing and interesting about the cases. Because again, just like we've talked about other cases before, you just can't see it coming. Yeah. And it's, and then also a little bit, okay, you know, I want to say that if you are meeting somebody on a dating website and they're like, Hey, go to this random garage that's weird. and duck into this half open garage. Now women, I would say that <laughs> women wouldn't do it, but with guys, she's pretty enough. You know, and that was the thing. He yeah. put a very beautiful woman and it's like, yeah. Oh, this hot chick wants me. Right. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. but guys, I, 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 you can I, get yeah, murdered too. Yeah. Going down alley, you know, crossing over a bridge, going into yeah. a warehouse. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Public place for everyone. Public place. Save yourself. Yes. Right. That's Need my it? PSA yes. of the day. <laughs> Go to a yeah. public place. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's right. And, and you know what, if you're taking her out, why aren't you picking her up? Right. Um, It was, from what I understand, it was more of a hookup situation. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't like a real date. It was a hookup. Okay. It was a tender type of situation. It wasn't going to be taken home to mom tomorrow. No, no, no. It wasn't like on our way to Bible school. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that would it was, not be it <laughs> yes, but still hideously sad and even you know it just and what a price to pay yeah. but the fact that he went back that's what it's almost I can see it being almost like a movie so Three don't times. go back into the warehouse yeah don't go back into the yeah. warehouse but but that's terrifying I mean my my intuition would just mm-hmm. kick in like mm, this isn't right something's wrong here right I, I would think yeah, what but I I also but, get freaked out about a lot of creepiness anyway. That's probably not that creepy, but that's me. No, I you know I, I'm with you. <laughs> the second it would be, oh, this is kind of funny. Why don't you just meet me at my warehouse in between an alley and a dark spot? Yeah, yeah, no, no right? It's like, oh, you don't live in a regular space or a hotel or somewhere I could scream. No, nope. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's like, okay. It's an no. abandoned warehouse outside of the city in the dark. There's one half light right. on the building. Right. And unfortunately, in this day and age, you do have to think of that when you're going out to say, is there someone that can hear me if I scream? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that, you know, so now I'm super interested in this, the Giles who wrote the book to say, yeah. what made you go down that alley into this space? <laughs> Not, yeah. well, and then- um, of course, the fact that once it all came out that what was going on, I'm sure he's terrified. But yeah, I can also, I, you know, I can kind of see how he's embarrassed to go, oh, I got duped. Mm-hmm. But duped yeah. into being, you know, but, 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 and he probably has a little bit of guilt. Because yeah. they're not going, you know, but then what could he do, right? I mean, what would, would the police going to be on this abandoned warehouse? Well, and I mean, how many, I would think, like, to me, I would think nobody else is going to fall for this. Who else is going to come to this? Like, they're yeah, going to true. think, oh. That's true. That'd be the embarrassing part to go, oh, I made a really me? dumb mistake. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's a really good point. Well, Jenny, that is a great case. Really interesting. And now Thanks. I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can find uh, the picture of him so he can be terrified even more. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for... Um, yeah, sharing it and uh, and and with our audience. So awesome job! And Great day. yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. We will see you on the next episode. Take care. Bye. Bye, Jenny. Bye.